RCR with Paul Brennan, Reality Check Radio. All right, it's Friday morning, time for our political panel here at Reality Check Radio. And I want to welcome to the panel Cam Slater, Marty Gibson, and Olivia Pearson. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so we're not going to get that time back from last night, are we? We're not going to get that back. Oh, what a dreadful, dreadful spectacle that we were suffered. I mean, I don't even know why they bothered to have Rawari Waititi there. I mean, unless it's just for sheer mirth at watching this buffoon with tortoiseshell glasses and a cowboy hat and some enormous piece of ponamu around his neck. Oh, um, and, and let's not forget to mention the facial um, additions. Um, and then, of course, the most we prominent have, feature. We have well, the it's other the least end. Of, it's the least of his. Um, it's the least of his problems. But the one he wants everyone to see the most. Well, and, yeah. And at the other end of the of the uh, of the four of them was James Shaw, who has to be the dopiest, wettest bloke known to man. I'm, I'm not even sure bloke could be used. He's just so hand wringingly pathetic. Does he stand in his own puddle, Cam? Well, I think it's waist deep. But <laughs> but here's the thing: he spent virtually the whole time banging on about how we need more green ministers. Has this fool not seen the polls? I mean, honestly, there's not going to be any green ministers after the election. None at all. He's going to have the largest caucus ever. It'll last one term, and then Labour will take all of those votes back from all the people who have been disillusioned with Labour and thought they were going to elect a green government. Well, it's never going to happen. Also, Labour won't be finished forever. Well, well, oh, I don't think really? they will. You well, know, well, just Jack Tames banging that drum about the coalition with between Labour and uh, National and the Greens pretty hard. He's been listening yeah, to us, mate. Yeah, he, he's right. done it. That's not the first time. I banged it real hard in that softball uh, interview he did after on uh, Sunday Q and A. He gave him a great big hug. In fact, I thought he nearly was going to slip his tongue in. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Glad that please, didn't please. happen. People are Aren't having you? their breakfast. People are eating their breakfast right now. You've got to. Could be worse. We could be able to breakfast. flash up pictures of Jacinda we... Ardern while they eat breakfast. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're in fine form this morning, Cameron. Of course. Um, was there in any point in even having this thing? Because it's, I mean, I didn't watch all of it, but it seemed to me that it wasn't really a debate. Well, they tried, but the whole, I thought all of them were rather lackluster. Um, well, none of them had any time to answer any questions. Like, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And it's always that. Well, no, I mean, they got cut off quite a lot, didn't they? And yeah, um, by Jack Tame. Yeah, by Jack Tame. Yeah. yeah, no, he did. He overrode. But anyway, I mean, all they all tend to do that. It seems to be a fashion. But um, even Winston, I thought, was rather lackluster um, in that debate. But he said a few um, things which were rather good. Um, but he, I, he I knocked felt it. He, he knocked it out time. of the. Winston did knock it out of the park on on a couple of things. Climate change. He's the only person who said, "Well, this is bull." You know, we shouldn't be beggaring our country uh, yeah. to to try and be the world leaders at at this climate thing. You know, it's pointless. Um, James Shaw tried to retort on that. Well, you know, we we didn't beat the Nazis by you know going. I thought alone, that I is... thought that was a very <clears throat> inappropriate comparison. So did I. I mean, just who's appalling. talking about the it Nazis? It was so disrespectful to human life. Yeah, yeah. well, women, Greens always are. They want less human life. I mean, when they say they want less to remove carbon. <laughs> less carbon, they're talking about you. Yeah, mm -hmm. they are. Right. But, um, Cam, i got to say, that that wasn't Winston knocking that out of the park. I mean, <laughs> It was, given the field was so pathetic. I know, right? but that's that's where, you, you know, because, I mean, he didn't he didn't fight against the whole idea of emissions trading because that's no, nonsense that's right. from, from go to woe. Um, but he did say that, um, yeah, we didn't want to beggar our economies um, to go down that road, but we already have started doing that, clearly. What? what? It was um it was good that he put a figure on it, you know. He sort of said it's we're going to take fifty to sixty billion out of our economy. I mean, some mm. government reports have said seventy billion, uh, and, and you know the the obvious uh, point that could have been knocked out of the park is that's you know twenty to thirty times the total treaty settlements. Now, if I was a Maori and I'd been told you know they can only afford cents on the dollar, uh, you know to recompense injustice. 
you know, uh, but they can't afford to borrow that much money and shoot it overseas. To well, we can't afford to borrow building that much, coal actually. We can't, we can't afford it. That's the, other, the other thing that Winston uh, uh, said that, that really hit home, particularly for our audience, is the, is the full-scale inquiry he wants to have into the COVID shen- shenanigans. That was his best moment. Yeah, yeah, but it was only a small duration-wise, a few seconds. Wasn't oh, it? yeah, it, right sure. It was near the it's end. It's the biggest but... story. It's the biggest thing. You know, what, some of my buddies came up with an idea on the show last night that, um, you know, we've been spending all this money on climate change, but we don't want to compensate vax-injured people. Why don't we just say, if well, if vaccine injury is non-existent, well, why don't we use the money we're going to spend on climate change to fund the, the very few people who are vaccine-injured and watch their eyes go wide open when they suddenly realise, well, actually, that's a whole lot of money. But it's yeah. equally it's equally facetious to spend money on climate change because, you know, you're making them forced between one made-up thing and one real thing. And climate change is made up. Vaccine injury is real. So let's spend the money that we're going to spend on climate change. Why not just come out and say that? I think Olivia, you made that point before. You're sort of weak on it. Just come out and say it's BS, mate. Sorry. As, as soon as story. anyone will say that, again, their uh, their votes will just soar because mm. most people feel just that way, that it's nonsense. Do it. uh, uh, he can't wing it, eh? He, that's a big mistake. If Winston think he, he thinks he can wing it on the way, that's dumb. Mm. He's got to think out everything he says, right? Is that right? Well, I mean, he's used to a different landscape, I think. Um, mm. Now it's not a time and, to wing. Yeah, he's dipping his toe in this water. Yeah, I, I th- yeah. and I but, mean, that's he, right. but when, he, when they're moving, when you get politicians moving, you can get them to change. When they're intransigent and so, and you know cemented to their position, like James Shaw is, and like Ra- Rauri Waititi cemented to a racist position that. Maori are a superior race from all others, and we all have to submit to their kind of democracy, which is no democracy at all. You can't re- reason with those people because they're so stuck where they are. Yeah. And there's somebody like Winston. I mean, he, he's he's acknowledged he did some things wrong. He's apologized for things before. He's moved on a whole lot of policies that he previously w- was in on. He's actually willing willing to listen to alternative ideas and then gather the evidence for that. Those other guys, they're not interested in that at all, and they're so doctrinaire. And Seymour's pretty much the same as well. He, he thinks that their economic solution is the only way, um, you know, but none of it's been proven anywhere in the world. But he's absolutely adamant that the ACT Party is the solutions for everything, and they're not. Well, what about um, Waititi going on at the end about um, social theory? We've got people that do yeah, social hello. theory, um, and we don't use words like, and he pointed at Winston and said, uh, uh, separatism, apartheid, um, you Racist. know. And, yeah, yeah, well, no, but that's because we've only got one said, answer for everything. He said that's subhuman. Racist. He said yes, subhuman. subhuman. Yes, you're right. Mm. I mean, that's um, like saying genocide, you know, the trans people say. What? Subhuman? Who said that? Yeah, why, why did he speaks to the worst impulses of people, blaming you know other races for for all their problems, bitterness, covetousness, distrust, and, and you know the tragedy uh, is like socialism generally, really that the the, um, the opportunistic f- building of support that way feeds those human frailties and it blocks improvement and cooperation. Yeah. Presumably, um, he's giving up half his what two hundred k salary to help the in the cause. You know what's interesting, Marty? What you're just saying there is that Rauri Waititi looks at Winston Peters and David Seymour, and he sees white people. He doesn't see Maori, mm. right? He, he actually he actually said something like that to Winston. He, he did. I I heard him. Yeah, I know exactly what you and mean. It was Pam. so rude and so racist. Yeah, I'm proud of my heritage, unlike some other people on this stage. Yeah. Was it that comment? Well, and and know, he keeps that, saying, my dog, people, my people. Thing. Yeah, my people, my people, not yeah. your people, he said to Winston. You know, your people are, uh, are race baiting. Yeah. yeah. Winston Peters is a Maori. I know. Yeah. That, but you know, that's but the dog they whistling. Don't, yeah, they're the they ones who dog whistle. How come he got the most applause then? Well, they have obviously well, had a, a whole lot of reason. vote. Woke white liberals in the audience. Well, Jason Walls was there. It was all the media were there? You know, little yeah. lap lap dogs loving it. You know, the, 
Ravelry Waititi is just a useful idiot, and and they just cheer him on because you know they're all woke and they think it's wonderful. Well, did you see, I mean, when they were talking about, you know, we've got to act on climate change, and then they just talked to all these dopey, traumatised women who are at some climate rally. Yeah. Are but we going to boil? But what it's about gonna... it, What about the co-governance? Before they hit that one, um, they ran a whole lot of people in the street, which all happened to be Maori, who all said the same thing as, oh, it'll be better for us, bro, if we're in charge. That's exactly yeah. what they said. <laughs> and then this we is had, why I wonder if it's even any point in having this damn thing, you know? Well, it was no point having James Shaw and Rawi Waititi there. They're not going to be in government. They're not going to even get have a chance to implement Thank any of goodness. their policy. You know, it would have been far better just to have Winston and David Seymour have a right old Donnybrook, and I think we would have enjoyed that a whole lot more. Yeah. It would have been far more enjoyable. Well, the, the, When I see yeah, a guy like great. Waititi mm. on the stage... Well, I mean, when James Shaw sort of said at the outset, well, this is what you're going to get when Winston Peters and David Seymour were scrapping, and you could see them both thinking, ooh, he's got a point, you know. Not that what, it was, what was interesting, too, is that um, Rauri Waititi, he didn't have any notes. He just had a cell phone on the on the desk there, probably being texted um, racist lines to use from John Tamahiri after he's finished... Um, you know, having eggs splattered all over his face by the police telling everybody that the break into the house of their candidates not at all um, <laughs> to do with race. You know, surprise. Right? surprise. Yeah. He yeah. doesn't need any notes, though, Cam, because he's got no arguments. It, well, it's an empty vessel, as my grandfather would have said. Yeah, and, totally empty um, vessel. Winston rather sneakily had a black folder, um, which made it look like he didn't have any notes, and there was David Seymour and James Shaw with acres of paper, and I'm surprised nobody said to James Shaw, won't you think of the trees? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when, when, when I see a guy like Waititi standing on a stage as a political party leader um, in 2023, I all I see is a concrete example of 100 years of cultural Marxism come to fruition. He just you needs know, the clown shoes now, yeah. doesn't he? Really? Well, you know, when he said at the outset what he thought government should be, and he said it should feed you, love you, help you, and care for you. Oh, no, <laughs> I could you, hear that. I you are hear, your brother's keeper. I could yeah. hear the unicorns farting rainbows when they, when he said that. And his, his uh, saying that they should establish Maori supermarkets. Yeah. What are they going to call it? Iwi oh, Mart? I missed that one. Okay. <laughs> Well, I yeah. thought the funniest thing of, of was right at the start when uh, Jack Tame said, so. um, he, he asked about, uh, you know, should you should should we be able to get away with lying in politics? And James Shaw said, without a shred of humility, oh, yes, I think integrity is very important. What about those mm-hmm. qualifications? Yeah, tell us about your CV, James. Yeah, your fake degree. <laughs> yeah, it just disappeared, didn't it? Just sank Did- without trace. Did you notice, though, that Waititi actually admitted that um, the country wasn't settled by colonialists by force, but by consent? Yeah. Ooh, okay. He actually said that out loud. Um, yeah. I, I remember thinking, well, excellent, we've got no debate then. But um, he used those words that it wasn't by force, it was by consent. <laughs> well, he insisted it was, um, you know, that Māori were Indigenous, which sort of begs the question, well, were they Indigenous when James Shaw got? got here, uh, sorry, Captain Cook got here, and if so, uh, am I Indigenous in 200 years? Well, the other thing too is he Boy. then, after he claimed that they were Indigenous, then went on to tell us about what great explorers the Maori were to discover New Zealand. So <laughs> what is it? Are you great explorers and discoverers and fantastic navigators who never could get home? Who remember or, the canoe you came here on? Yeah, or are you Indigenous and you were here from mm. the start? It's really important in, you know, slapping around uh, Waititi that, you know, he he doesn't, we we don't allow him to uh, conflate that with uh, getting it all Māori. You know, he he is a clown. We're not the audience, though. He is dog whistles. But to his his audience, he's probably saying all the right things. Yeah, that's the dog whistle. And, and, you know, we've been uh, accused of... um, of overly endorsing a party whose top three or four uh, prospective MPs are Top three, at least. Yeah, exactly. 
But um, hmm. yeah, it just Ralph, shows you. It I, doesn't I actually matter. think though that I mean, you know, TV One poll the other night said that the Maori Party was going to have three seats, and that's all predicated on Rawiri Waititi winning a seat. Now I've been talking to a few people down that way, and uh, it's no, it's by no means certain that he's going to win his seat. So we actually could see the Maori Party bundled out of Parliament, which would be a good thing. Well, I think a lot of people in Rotorua have um, have suffered from their motels being emptied of tourists and uh, filled with um, bludgers. Well, yeah, Grims. Well, yeah. It, in any case, I've talked to the uh, local people, and that's what they told us. Yeah, so I think that'll play against him as he's uh, coming up with this kumbaya Marxist. Anything more to say about in Maori? I know yeah. you, Rauri Waititi said we can solve climate change with indigenous science. Yeah. Yep, we he said that. <laughs> he, that's what he said. Climate. With the rolling yeah. log. Okay. I wonder if um, indigenous science goes at the same speed as science. <laughs> well, this is the same indigenous science that didn't have a wheel. Yeah, that, the rolling log. That's what that, it, yeah, yeah, they didn't even have that. Stone Age science. Yeah, uh, they couldn't boil water because they didn't have pots. They could yes. put hot stones in them. I, I've seen someone correct on that. They didn't have chimneys. But, yeah, again. I know, mean, they had knowledge. We, they got here. That was quite a feat, yeah, you've got to say. They got feat. here, They and they did it. They repeated the, the journey over and over. So that's yeah. they navigated. They built a craft that could do that. So that's something. So I mean, we, we were burning yeah. witches back around that time as well. And and I guess the point is, no, well, we, we don't. 1765? No. No. When was oh, was the when was the um, Counter Reformation Reformation leading up to that? America. That was 16th century. Yeah, this is um, uh, this is Olivia's wheelhouse, Marty. You're on a hiding. Well, no, no, I was just. I mean, when yeah, Cook wasn't, came, wasn't yeah, that, Cook, wasn't Cook, that Cook, Cook was subject. a great representative of the Enlightenment and um, a stellar representative of how how good the Enlightenment was and um, and no, no, they were very civilized. Back then, the colonials, and um, and that was made evident by, you know, the missionary class that came here. The missionary, the, well, the, the missionaries, missionaries who bothered to write down and try their language, and try, yeah, try and write down and record and uh, for posterity their language. You know, yeah. I guess my uh, that, that was the colonialists that did there's, that. There's plenty of things that we've done in the past that uh, we probably you know wouldn't endorse now. <laughs> In the same way, I, I'm not going to do Maori. this. I'm just, I'm not going to do this searching my own culture for faults in order to excuse the most heinous faults in a bunch of people that were still committing cannibalism when our people got here and now want to take over this um, whole political system and loot it. I'm not going to do it. Mm. Well, it's the backward looking thing that I think is, is at fault more than well, you, modern. You know what people. happens if you drive around looking in your rear view mirror? <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, no people are perfect. Um, we're all here now, and and I just want people to behave themselves. But it seems like we're asking for something really hard, which is one law for all, one system for all, and yet it's not. That is actually um, a system that the European governments and culture was built on and still holds true today, and it's the best system. And and, well, we, and don't even get we should be argument. proud of our whakapapa oh, no, we've for bringing got to have, it here. We need to have our Maori forms of d- democracy, says Rawiri Waititi, whatever yeah, that you is. You don't even get a say because you're higher up on the intersectional uh, scale. You're the tohunga class. Intersectional what? You're privileged. So intersectional you, what? In, interse- <laughs> <laughs> don't do that language either, you see. No, there has to be something else we can talk about. That debate yeah, was I'm just going to say, are we over? <laughs> Are we over this um, poor excuse for a debate? <laughs> Definitely. Can we move was, on from that? It was very irritating. We're all ornery about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It was unedifying. Yes. And do, do you think it swung anyone, though? Mm. I wouldn't well, be surprised if Seymour got a bump in the polls from actually having some arguments that were at least, yeah. you know. I think David Seymour, than... I agree with Olivia. I think David Seymour might have picked up a few. I think Winston might have picked up a few as well on the climate change and the co governance stuff. Can we just um, quickly touch on polls? Because I see, again, the same trajectories are, are, are like continuing. So Axe lost a bit more from what I can see. Correct me if I'm wrong. New Zealand first picked up a little bit more. I think the Nats have bumped up slightly. You know, the, the, it's it's not over till it's over. So um, 
yeah, Luxon two and, pole. and Hipkins and neck and neck for preferred PM. I, I don't know. I can never work out how that works. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's rubbish. I mean, but, but, um, but, but New Zealand also is still on one percent, yeah. and and uh, Freedoms New Zealand, I think they're on one percent. Yeah, so just... those two million voters that Liz Gunn keeps talking about seem to be hiding somewhere. I mean, you know, she's still they're still gunning for the party vote despite having two list MPs and polling at one percent, which you know I have to say just now looks very odd given the administrative error that they made with the list candidates. I I felt sorry for Liz when it happened, but I'm not so much feeling much sorry, uh, very sorry for her now after you know she's blamed the electoral commission and. Um, when she went on Rodney Hyde's interview only a few days before that happened and said how good the Electoral Commission had actually been to deal with. So, I mean, I'm seeing some very strange things like, um, for instance, a classic case in point is a Facebook New Zealand loyal supporter going by the name of No Way, W-H-E-Y, posted on John Ansell's page, break the corrupt system. The people of New Zealand need to stand up in mass and break the system. Under the situation that New Zealand Loyal now has, a big party vote for New, Zeal- New Zealand Loyal breaks the system. There will be a national scandal if there are a load of empty, unallocated seats in Parliament oh, representing gosh. all those people of New Zealand who gave the Democratic vote to, to the New those two million, Loyal Party. Those two million votes. Those two million vo- votes. So again, vote party party vote New Zealand loyal and break the system. How can you get I mean, off on is, that sort of tangent? How, but, how, this is the thing that she's doing. Like I watched it, it, it is a personality disorder. But I mean, I saw her in a public meeting. Uh, it was posted on the NZ Loyal website. She slagged off uh, Reality Check Radio. She slagged off um, you know a couple of the hosts, saying that we weren't giving them a fair. Oh. Uh, she didn't name them, but she slagged us off as saying that, you know, that we're, we're running a psyop, we're doing it. So they're talking about me mainly. <laughs> right? The other this morning is... I said I was a fa- sort of a fan of hers. I mean, hell. I know. But here's the thing, right? What she doesn't say is the number of times that we tried to get her on the station, right? And, event- and she was insistent only wanting to talk to one host. And she didn't get what she wanted, but she did get on the station eventually. And then all the wheels fell off. And now we've got this crazy situation where she's out there telling everybody to go and get affidavits that, that show you're going to vote for, for NZ Loyal. So we now vote, um, come in, and the machines have um, tallied us up incorrectly because they're going to steal the vote from us. This is crazy stuff that she's oh, talking about, right? And she's talking about there's being 2 million votes out there and will everyone party vote for this and then we'll have all of those... It's almost half the population of the country, isn't it? Yeah, they've only got two people on their list, right? Are 2 million I mean, people even vote in this country? Yeah, well... Yeah. I don't know, but she, that's what she thinks. Uh, and then if they say they got 2 million votes, that's 48 list seats would go straight to NZ Loyal and that's what she's claiming, right? That This is the, how, how much of a fantasist she is that she's claiming they're going to get these 48 list seats, which then will be unallocated because they've only got two on their list. They'll be vacant a little bit like But that's you. going to break the system, Cam. And well, people will see the, the glaring absence of people sitting in those it. seats. Yeah, it's, you know, <laughs> they want to break the system by participating in the system. Okay, all yeah. right. Yeah, are we going to break the system by suing the Electoral Commission? That's what she announced yesterday, that she's going to be suing the Electoral Commission because they should have helped. It's crazy stuff. I mean, I'm, not, I'm literally over hearing about NZ Loyal and how did they're any, going to Did anyone hear Gary Moller talking on our program? Oh, when no, was, I'd like to, though. When, when he said, okay, get real, guys. I love you in the Freedom Parties, but we're in the crap, and if mm. we don't, do something the right thing this time. We are finished. That's what he said. Well, so I like I... them too. There's plenty of policies that both they, Democracy New Zealand, the Umbrella Party has that are fine. But we're two weeks out from the election. I, I know this. It's it's time to get real. And um, I'd just like to do a little spiel on this because it's one of the things that just keeps coming back to me, being part of the freedom movement, being associated with different groups and and you know, having arguments fired at me all, all the time. I'm I'm aware of how they think. 
Um, many of them are Voices for Freedom groups as well. Um, and this, this sentiment about breaking the system, this lingo they're using, um, the trouble with speaking like that about our system, um, which when you're talking about a system, it needs a much broader definition anyway, but because we all, because we all benefit from it in some way, um, it was set up by realistic conservatives who value heritage, family, traditions, guts and self-reliance, all good things. But the radical left have infected all the institutions through the long march through the culture. Um, and, you know, that's just at its zenith now, um, which is woke culture and behold the human deformity that, that it is. Um, but the pushback against globalism, which is the major artery pumping out all things woke into the institutions, the resistance to it has gathered such a massive momentum in a way that has been heartening to witness for all of us. Um, large freedom awakenings are now in play in every country in the world. Um, but the systems are already broken, but not entirely. We don't need to break them anymore. So I don't respect that kind of talk, um, especially from people who have been politically catatonic for the last 40 years, which my generation, Generation X, has been. And also another reason I don't respect it, this kind of break the system talk, burn it down kind of sentiment, even though I sympathize with the I sympathize with the rebellious sentiment. Um, I don't respect it because in their apathy, our fellow citizens didn't pay attention. In effect, they let the radical left take charge of the people. Um, and, and then they kept on voting for those same uh, things without much challenge. You know, and before you, <laughs> before you know it, the centre right has moved over to the centre left and the hoople heads, you know, didn't give much of a stuff unless it interferes with their gas bill mentality. Um, and now, you know, we're all going to be affected by, you know, higher gas bills. But, you, you know, a lot of the freedom movement were voting Labour and voting the Greens all this time, right, which are the great bastions of wokeness, um, which means bastions of Marxism, you know, pseudo-Marxism, neo-Marxism, libertarian Marxism, classical Marxism, Marxist humanism, whatever the strand of Marxism uh, is that's fashionable. Deconstructionism. Yeah. Um, fraud shrimp, baked shrimp, <laughs> sauteed shrimp. But, you know, basically... Uh, it's a malignant cancer, and it, it has, Marxism has always been the death of a long-standing culture if you don't restrain it. So, so now the last three years has politically suddenly gotten everybody's attention big time, right? And COVID was a godsend in a way because it sent an adrenaline shot to the heart of our populations who saw the respect that Marxism actually has for good people, which is none. So... You know, you've got to start with reclaiming our institutions, not blowing them up, not breaking them even further. You've got to reclaim them. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're the precious institutions of a long-standing democracy, and maybe we should count our blessings that the radical Wokies prematurely climaxed and showed the covetous, dehumanised grotesqueries that they are before it got to the bloody guillotine, you know? Yeah, because that's, a good that's point. what they're capable of. Yeah, once the once the ma the masks came off, once the masks went on. <laughs> well, I think yeah. about it. Well, once you know, you could really see who's who at the zoo. Once you could start uh, calling people, calling the police to report on your neighbour. And I, I remember reading it or hearing an interview with a police officer who had resigned when this huge flood of calls came in with people reporting their neighbours for having visitors from their visits from their kids and things like that. Oh, it was just horrendous, Marty. Uh, but, but also what we showed is that we can build a freedom camp, um, we can organise splendidly, we can endure cyclones and government psyops, you know, we can sing, dance and hang out at a mini Woodstock. Um, and that became a crusade and a great one at that. But we need to sharpen up mightily to be a political force that reclaims our institutions from a nationalist point of view. And that takes a completely different set of skills to be a proper political reckoning, you know, and that's where Liz Gunn, New Zealand Loyal and all those parties have fallen over. You don't, you, you're not a crusader and then just transfer that skill set to politics and expect to be some, uh, successful. Hey, yeah. Cam. Exactly, 100%. Okay, I reckon this um, uh, fits quite well with 
on the end of that. And maybe we're jumping around a bit here on the order. But I had Guy Hatchard on yesterday morning, and he's coming on again a bit later this morning to talk more about this. This is the 11,000 exemptions for senior med staff. It looks like it's a worst-case scenario scandal here revealed by OIA. These people somehow remarkably signed off by, you know, you know the, the, the names that we know, exempted while, I guess, being part of the um, the complex, putting out those persuasion, that persuasion propaganda, that coercion. This surely it must have some effect before an election because this does feel like some epic scandal, doesn't it? It'd be it'd be nice if it could have an effect before an election, Paul. But um, I'm not sure that it's widespread news because it wasn't mentioned in that debate. It's uh, to me that's one of the biggest stories in the land right now. Yeah, but who's yeah, going to? It sank with James's James Shaw's fictional BA. You know, it's just yeah. and knee was hidden uh, bar- barometric data indicating that we're getting fewer storms uh, these days. I've met people who are in a terrible way because of this, and have lost people, and it's heartbreaking. And I've seen the list of over seven hundred, and these people got exemptions. Yeah, shocking. Um... I mean, really, this, is, this, this, this just down? goes This goes to why we yeah, did the All Blacks. Evidence. No, they would have been exempt. I guarantee it. Yeah. That's why if we you, need the COVID inquiry. You, you wouldn't risk running out on the field and doing that level. Peter McCullough will tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. We need so that, that inquiry, Paul. We don't so have much more to things, say about that. Well, so long as the, these things can come out um, in a proper inquiry as to how that happened. I mean, I'm glad that people actually got exemptions, but it seems to be on the sly and it seems to be sneaky and the cowardice involved in it whilst they mandated people lower than them in the same medical professions. I mean, that's just the ones who were at the, um, at the, at the, you know, front line. And also these people were able to pass into restaurants and travel to the United States. I mean, I know plenty of um, high rank, you know, of senior surgeons and theatre nurses who who were vital to the system who who tried to get exemptions and didn't so you'd have to um ask how how transparent the process for granting them was is, is and, the, and how come ashley bloomfield signing those off because we presume it was him or christopher hipkins and yet refusing exemptions for people who had already been damaged by the first yeah injured. Jab. yeah my, my yeah. myocarditis has been one of those major injuries and still I, I have a... I How have can a, you live with yourself? How can you well, sleep at night? Uh, I mean, I there are a few pinch points like that. The fact that they knew that there was a risk of myocarditis, if you know that and you're acting ethically in as much as you can if you're mandating the bloody thing, um, you know, if you know that it's a possibility, you look for signs of it and you, you ensure that people get timely treatment for it rather than saying it's all in their head or they're depressed. Yeah, or they're anxious. Well, they, but they knew that was a lie. You could, otherwise, these people wouldn't have been exempt. Oh, it's a Pandora's box. That's why they've circled the wagons. That's why yeah. they're not letting any of this come out. And that's probably why Winston Peters is somewhat cautious about it, even though it's obvious that it should be a, a point. He probably does know that uh, if he pokes the wasp nest too hard, they're going to really... I, I get really... that, but there was mm. no mention of it from the debate host even though it, this area oh, is a, still oh, the Paul, biggest issue in the frick Paul. i know what happened it's... you're in utopiaville <laughs> no no i'm not it's Honestly. like i said to my dad when he says oh they could find out whether it was long COVID or the jab they just need to you know work out whether the people suffering it got the jab and it's like i always say to him and he's an ex-gp i always say to him oh it's quaint that you're still talking about this as a public health issue rather than a globalist totalitarian depopulation yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know what you mean, Paul. It would have been nice to have heard somebody mention such an important um, OIA on, on, on a debate like that. Or even but just the question that, about that would support be the old for, free world. Va- for vaccine. Jack Tame, he knows someone who's been injured. I know about 10 people. Jack Tame would be the sort of person that would say it was all in his head. Oh, crikey. All right. Um, now, this is interesting, um, and um, I, I've seen a, a few of these things today, and that is the Taxpayers Union. And I think maybe, does that include the Free Speech Union? And they're kind of pushing back against uh, Winston and and the question of free speech. And I kind of wonder why that's that's happening. Yeah, I had a, an email drop into my into my inbox from the Taxpayers Union, it's absolutely outrageous 
what they're saying. I mean, this is this is the sorts of things that they're saying. You know, I um, I can't go into detail, but I've seen other confidential polling that suggests that things are getting even worse. Underlined for the centre right and Christopher Luxon with Winston Peters in an even stronger position. I mean, this is the taxpayers' union. And they're they're emailing people, their their supporters, to say that that this is bad for the centre right. I mean, as if national centre right anyway. I mean, they're centre left. Um, yeah. yeah. But but claiming that this is bad because Winston Peters is in an even stronger position, they have no respect for democracy or uh, free speech. Then then they go on to say Winston Peters has said he won't go with Labour this time. But he surprised us all before when he chose Jacinda Ardern Labour. Oh, not that old thing again. Yeah. Despite old saying enough. before uh, the election he would go with the highest polling party. These guys take drugs. He goes, then they've in bold highlighted this means the result of this year's election is far from certain. <clears throat> what a load of bollocks. What do you mean certain? It's certain. <laughs> Give me certain, mummy. Give me it certain. It is peace. absolutely certain Labour are going to get rinsed. It's absolutely certain that they won't have enough with the Greens and the Maori Party to form a government. That is certain. What this is, is the taxpayers' union who pretend that they're this vast organisation. They're actually an astroturf organisation that is a lock for the ACT Party. What does astroturf mean again in this context? Yes, fake grass. So they, no, they, they, so they say they're a grassroots organisation, but it's it's faker than fake. And I know how fake it is because I was at the foot foundation meeting that was held in Puhoy uh, that formed the taxpayers' union, right? So I was there when they were planning it. So I can tell you exactly how they operate because I was there in the planning of the formation of the taxpayers' union. Is there any crossover to the free speech union, or are they... They all use the same nation builder, right? It's all on the same account, and it's all run by Jordan Williams, right? And that also includes uh, the the little lobby group that's in Auckland, um, you know, for the Ratepayers Alliance in Auckland. It's all part of the same group, the free speech um, union, the taxpayers' union, and... Uh, and and the uh, Rate Payers Alliance in Auckland, all operated by the same people. It's the same people that are in the office that are writing these emails. It's the same people that are pushing this out. Yeah, don't get me wrong. They're successful in getting stuff into the news, but we should be under no mistake that they are very closely aligned with the ACT Party. They I mean, some, like of their normies, senior, norm, yeah, see, some of their seniors, some of their senior staff are former ACT Party staffers. Okay. I've always seen them as an, an, a bit of an extension of the ACT Party. Well, they are. I mean, it's, this has just proved it. I mean, you, you, the polls... And I wouldn't mind if they if they stood up for free speech every time. Well, they don't. Just... They never stood up for my free speech. When no, I was being surveilled by the police, they, you know, they exactly. sent me this shabby email from their lawyer, rent, lawyer to rent that they use all the time, who said, oh, well, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. And I thought, what? Well, they, they're really? saying that. Okay. Yeah, that's that's exactly what um, what what uh, Stephen Frank sent me in an email. And if don't you've got they, nothing to hide, you've got nothing they, to fear. Yeah, that's a terrible response, Cam, terrible. Yeah. But, but also they're, they're quite supportive of um, trannies reading to kids and libraries and things well, like forget that. forget of that. They, right, they the think that's speech. a free speech issue and that's just yeah. bollocks right there. What they really um, should say issue. is that they're the free speech union for left-wing academics because that's all they stand up for. Mm. Okay, before we get to uh, talk about um, what's been happening in the US, there's one more thing that uh, I note here on our list, and that is Winston and comments uh, around the conscience vote. I heard him say that. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah, I'd like to know what Cam thinks about that. Um, I, I, I tend to think it's on the right track, given the fact that list MPs are not accountable to any electorate, um, nor do they need any consultation with their communities. I think New Zealand First policy is probably essentially more democratic over these kinds of cultural conscience matters like euthanasia, abortion. We know we can't rely on their consciences. We know that. They've proved that. They don't have consciences. So why? Give 
give them that. Yeah. Best MPs are a creature of the party. Yeah, you know, it's a collective when, party vote. So when MMP was um, being first mooted, um, my father went to Germany on a fact finding mission for the National Party to see how they could work this thing. To penetrate know. the cabinet. Penetrate the cabinet. He was over there, and he came back and he said, "We don't want this. This is really bad." What happens is everyone thinks that you, through your votes, you're going to have this motherhood and apple pie holistic view that everyone's going to work together and it's all going to work fabulously, right? And it doesn't work like that because the parties end up more powerful than they were before. And although uh, First Past the Post had its flaws, it at least gave you governments. And if you didn't like that government, you tossed them out. Now you've got an MP that could be dead set useless and take Michael Wood for an example, right? Completely useless. Dead His Wood. entire skill set uh, that qualified him to be a minister was having the ability to measure the inside seam of a businessman's suit at Hugh Wright. That's his level of work experience that he's had before going into, into politics. Hands on, literally. He's dead set useless. He's absolutely failed as a minister, failed as an MP, and yet he's going to get re-elected time after time. And even you know, in another say another couple of uh, uh, election cycles, maybe Labor uh, will will start being able to get some list MPs. But even if you got rid of him as as an electorate MP, he'd still get back in on the list. And his conscience is going to. He's still voting on a conscience that well. What can you well, say about people, that, given comments? Co socialists and communists don't have a conscience. Well, so um, Edmund Burke wrote back in um, the Enlightenment era, just before the French Revolution, around that time, about the time that Cook was probably sailing around mm -hmm. the world. He wrote, your representative owes you not his industry only, but his judgment. And he betrays instead of serving you if he sacrifices it to your opinion. Government and legislation are matters of reason and judgment and not of inclination. Mm. Um, and, I mean, given the fact that, that you know, his, a lot of his writings were the foundation of uh, democratic theory for the Westminster system, I think referenda... Um, instead of conscience votes is fairer because um, those th th those judgments can be passed to the people instead of these. I'll, go, very... I'll give you a very simple argument against referenda. Yeah, go COVID. for it. COVID. Mm. Meaning that? 95% of the morons Would have voted. did, did yeah. what they to were told. Do you want those people deciding things? No. Yeah. You almost need a, a separate trans, transitory uh, process where we get to that point. Like where a privy we council, of enlightenment. offshore privy council type thing with an objective view. Mm. Who knows? But they, I mean, you know, at the moment, instead, at the moment, their way of governing is to sneak bills and acts through with very little consultation to the public. I mean, big things, big things like digital identities, co governance. Mm -hmm. Co-governance, yeah, and all that. So mm. um, nothing's look at Australia. perfect, I mean, but I just don't trust the, the general Australia populace. Is, no, no, I, I'm with you, Cam. It's like having to trust a jury of your peers. You'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, you know? I know peers. I have no peers. I'm, I'm unique. <laughs> right? You're peerless. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, the 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 yes no vote going on, and um, which is the day after our election here in Australia. That thing will get put to referendum, and I think blown out of the water. And let's hope it's blown out of the water for the next twenty years. If only you know, we could do that. Well, yeah. all right. okay. arguments on both sides, and your your point against it, Cam, is fair. You know, I mean, I fear that aspect of it as well. Four hundred and forty-five thousand voters for National in twenty seventeen changed in twenty twenty to vote for Jacinda Ardern. They're the people who'd be voting in a referendum. They drank that Kool Aid. Right well, there. They gargled it and swizzled it yeah. and made little yeah. fountains out of it and frolicked in it. <laughs> and they got away scot-free. Yeah. And, okay. they, and, bl and they blame Winston. Mm. All right. I guess if we, we mention Winston too much more, I'll get um, I'll, I'll get buried under a, a, a digital heap of emails. Well, let's talk it. about space cadets then. Okay, quickly. But then I want to go to Matt Gates because I think he's got the biggest set of balls on the planet right now. So, so, so here we are, right, in a nation <clears throat> that can't even fill potholes, where our kids don't go to school, 
uh, where hospitals don't work, uh, people are sick and dying, and Christopher Luxon's big election promise nine days out from, from, from polling day is to have a minister for space. Who would that be? First of all, it have to be him. him. He's a space cadet. I mean, <laughs> it didn't strike astrophy- me, Cam. <laughs> Any astrophysicists amongst the national lineup? Well, I don't think but David Seymour is probably the most qualified for it. Being an engineer, Christopher Luxon is, is Christopher so Luxon is naturally and aerodynamically fit for uh, space launches. Uh, here's an idea: Why doesn't um, somebody reach out and say we're going to have a, a, a unique position, Minister for Space? It's going to be completely out, so you don't need to be an MP to do it, and we're going to appoint Liz Gunn. <laughs> oh, stop it. Running the space oh. program. If National very... want to create new ministries, then they should be prepared to cut three old ones. Like Trump's, remember Trump's policy with yeah. new regulations? Oh, that's easy. Maori affairs, women's affairs, and Pacific Island affairs. Yep, yeah. gone. Well, gone by lunchtime. Sure, we'll have a space cadet. So <laughs> did everyone go, wow, when he said that? Like, wow. No, I think he was too busy answering questions over um, some of his candidates. But anyway, I'm seeing a a, a rising um, will to authority in Christopher Luxon. The more people have said he's starting to look prime ministerial, <laughs> I'm, starting, I'm starting to think he's starting to look authoritarian. You know, I've sort of heard him go, "Yep, we're going to control that." Like someone said to him, oh, "I was a debate the week before last where they said should nurses be paid the same in private system as in the public system?" He said, "Yep, yep, they should." Now, I hire the odd nurse uh, to do cosmetic work. And it's quite a different job on you. From uh, no, <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah, what you have is done, that, Marty? Is that that bleachy uh, thing? That it, it's uh, no, um, it's quite a different job. You know, you can sort of pick and choose your days. There's no night shift. You're I reckon, dealing with people who are well, and you're making them look pretty. I reckon. Um, I reckon that Christopher Luxon has a large range of Hugo Boss suits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we know what that means. He also said in um, answer to a question by the sock pu- puppet, Patrick Gower, um, you know, would you compensate uh, vaccine injured people? Something along no. the lines. And he went, no, he didn't just say no. He went, no. Yeah. Mm, but It was a nasty no. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was a nasty no. Yeah. No, like, I don't give a flying beat. The, yeah. the mark starting to come off. You know, it was interesting. And in, in my show, at the end of it, I had my cams buddies. So I had five buddies on. And I asked them about that about that exact thing. It, uh, is vaccine injury real, and should they be compensated? Well, every single one of those buddies knew at least three people that's vaccine. You injured. see, this is what's happening, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I, I mentioned Matt Gates. He. Do you think Olivia? You, you'd ask you this. Do you think he has got the biggest? Kahuna's. On because that was an incredible move he pulled off there he against be McCarthy. He oh, should be careful astounding. though, catching the underground, shouldn't he? Probably. Uh, well, he, um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was a beautiful display of the Republic actually working for a change. You know, the ousting of uh, Speaker Kevin McCarthy, um, is, is an example of how you can get rid of swamp creatures if they if they act like snakes, and he certainly did. I mean, Gates has been holding his fire to his feet to the fire ever since he came in in January. And, um, yeah, I mean, Matt Gates, what he's done amongst his own party is not popular. I mean, Fox News are just slamming him on every single program. Um, but he has his supporters, and he didn't need as many as you would think um, to pull off such a thing. But there you go. Um, and he deployed the what is it? The right to vacate, the motion yes. to vacate. Motion, uh, first time it's ever done, been done. First time it's ever been done successfully and gotten oh, rid of somebody. Yeah. Um, Gates has for months threatened to use that as a procedural tool. Uh, to try to strip McCarthy of his office, but it escalated, of course, when McCarthy relied on Democrats to provide the necessary votes to keep the government open, which is threatened every year. We always go through this drama every year, um, which meant more aid to the Ukraine and some pet project of Biden's for, I don't know, disaster relief or something worth $16 billion. Probably um, direct to Ukraine in the end. <laughs> yeah, totally. And also how many of those disasters are, you know, 
committed rather than happen, you know. Yeah. McCarthy totally appeased all the Democrat demands, which really, really angered Gates. Um, and it's always his great suspicion of Gates's suspicion of McCarthy's style as a politician. So he deployed it. And um, it was incredible. It was a dramatic showdown, which he won. So McCarthy's gone, uh, mercifully short career as speaker. And I believe that uh, Jim Jordan's thrown his hat in the ring to be a contender, and they're still looking at Steve Scalise, although I believe he has. Was he the stopped. guy who was shot up by the, yeah. the crazy guy with the gun? Yeah. Yeah. But he's, but, I mean, he's been through a lot as a politician, yeah, um, hasn't wow, he? Wow, resilient guy. Um, <laughs> what, what about, though, Trump? He's, they've mentioned him, and he said he'd, he'd, he'd consider it. I saw. Um, yeah, that, I don't uh, know. I think he's just playing. Wouldn't know? that just be a fantastic, entertaining outcome to all of this, though? Well, I want him to be president. So, you know, well, you I don't know if that? he can do both, but. Oh. I, I'd, I'd be surprised if Trump did it, but it must be Can you be the tempting. speaker in jail? Pardon? Can you be the speaker in jail? <laughs> I think there'd be a few logistical <laughs> issues. <laughs> How do you whack a in. gavel? From Z- yeah, that's right. <laughs> the best thing about that was when, um, the, uh, was when McCarthy said, bring it on when the yeah. prospect of the motion was uh, he tweeted that or X'd it. Or like whatever. he thought he had it. Yeah, and Gates responded to the post with one of his own writing, just did. Yeah. <laughs> That's cold. Well, I, yeah. I saw Gates do a, um, a speech post that in the Congress, and he really dumped so heavily on the, you know, the swamp system of the donors. And, and you know, he was he was hard. He was he, on fire. He was uh, packing, you know. Yep. And he basically said, you can go to hell, you know, Um you know, he, he's he's right. I mean, it's about how much money you've got, not necessarily your merit. And Gates wants to see a change to that, and good on him. I mean, remember, too, that this all happened right when Trump had to go through that New York court hearing um, for yet another show trial over the how valuation is that of... How that judge's maniacal smiling? Oh, he's yeah, a nutcase. What a weirdo. A, yeah, psychopath. Um I mean, there's no crime committed. Trump's paid back all those loans. It's normal practice. Yeah, the banks are happy. Yeah, everyone overvalues their properties when they're asking for more money. That's funny that they got Tommy Robinson on that, though, too, the first time. Remember, that's how they got Tommy. Oh, okay. uh, uh, His paperwork over applying for loans. It's a very similar thing. So this is is their um, lawfare uh, of choice. Yeah. But, you know, I I just wanted to mention, too, that – for people that say, you know, who's Trump? Who's who will Trump choose as his running mate for VP when he, you know, does the next election, which is let's face it, only a year away? And they're talking about RFK Jr. Um, and how that would be the the great ticket. But really, yeah. mm. Trump needs to look no further than Matt Gates. Mm. Yeah, the, 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 there's something mate. to be fair, uh, or you know, uh, with Matt Gates, he does have quite a kind of weird look too. He looks like. Reminds me like someone out of the Thunderbirds or something. You know, he's sort of he, built... It's probably all that. He's highly Botoxed like a lot of them are, but oh, okay. I, I think he's quite gorgeous. And the hair cream. Myself, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I just see a man. He does but... look like the special kid, though, doesn't he? A little bit like the David Seymour's. He's sort got of. a he's got an unusual look for sure, but he's definitely he's got so much spirit. But I guess he would always be trouble if you chose him as a running mate, you know what I mean? He's always his own man and he's going to yeah. be a handful and that would give Trump pause, but he'd be a hell of a what running about mate. about Tulsi Gabbard? I always thought that might be quite a... Yeah, she's smart. hopelessly on board with all the green stuff, unfortunately. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apart from I thought, that... I thought, I thought she'd awesome. woken up, but maybe not. not maybe, enough. Well, maybe she has a bit more. Did anyone catch the Tucker Carlson interview with um, military historian Victor Davis Hanson? Yes, I did. Yes. Wasn't that something? Scary. Yeah. Yeah, but I was really glad that he pointed out that what we what we're living through at the moment is a revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Um an economic revolution, a cultural revolution and a political revolution all in one. And his closest point of um comparison is the Jacobin dictatorship of France during the reign of terror and the French Revolution and I think yeah. that's right. Um and that we are living through something very similar. So, again, I say our way of defeating this, our only hope to defeat it is to conduct a, a vigilant counter-revolution which wins back our institutions. They're ours, you yeah. know? 
Why it's do just we a question of, of how to do that. Sorry, Marty. Well, we're well, at the peacefully. stage now where, where the cards are all getting lined up. And, and if you care to look, you can see that they're getting lined up. But uh, if you uh, would rather not um, think about it, you can pretend that they're not. You know, you can mm. pretend that uh, these various chess moves aren't, aren't bringing us closer to some sort of horrible checkmate, which is a boot stamping on a human face forever, but we're getting close. Gary Moller said, think of it like a chess game. Every piece is there, t- disposable to protect one piece on the board. Mm. The king, the queen. The tip of the, tip of the pyramid. Yeah. So you've got to be prepared to, to to use your pieces. And in the end, it doesn't matter if you lose your pieces. In the end, the, the goal is only one thing. Well, that's to for the king and queen to hold power, though, right? If you're going to well, use the to, to protect, analogy. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the sort of literal definition. But whatever you're trying to... To protect, you got to use your the if you think of it as chess. You've got board. to sacrifice your pawns. Y- yeah, yeah. And yeah, your bishops. You got to you got to go hard. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and, uh, and not and not be too pussy about it. Oh no, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, we 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 want to stop. We want to arrest this kind of woke dictatorship because if they take that to their zenith, you're looking at the guillotine. So we're lucky that we are still in the realm of ideas and politics and we have got options to be able to fight this kind of thing politically before these Jacobin-like woke um, crazy people want to completely de-Christianize the whole West. Oh, they're just a tool. They're just, they're just, as I said, personality disordered people who, uh, given the correct stimulus, will behave a certain way. They're, they're not... As I said, they're, they're screens and keyboards. They're, they're, they're well, not Jacinda Ardern ended up being a little bit more than that. I, um, I don't think she's... much more. Really? No. I, I. Well, do you really think she came up with all that stuff? Do you think? No, that... no. I, I, I agree. But she's she, a player. There's a puppet aspect to her, she's but she's she's zealotry woke um, and was quite happy with dictatorship and was quite yeah. happy with forced injections. Yeah. Yeah, and well, see, that's because and <laughs> exempting a whole bunch of people, <laughs> eleven thousand, yeah, as it as it turned out, and that's probably the tip of the iceberg. I'm picking. Yeah, I'm, oh. I'm surprised David Seymour hasn't called for an inquiry on how they were. Why were they exempted when they should have been, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, put onto his bus forcibly at gunpoint and and vaccinated? The yeah, Ibiza well, party bus. Yeah. Well, mm. Seymour won't accept that doctors may have had it wrong mm. or did anything wrong. You know. Um, the thing well, about um, Gates, though, that other move is that he's pulled the rug from Ukraine for Ukraine funding in the near term. I think through that because that continuing resolution had that baked in, and people are saying, can the Ukrainian government stay paying themselves in the meantime? Oh wow! Well, you see, I mean, this is what's so interesting about what Gates did is that um, he is not a supporter of that war, whereas most of the Republican Party are. Um, That's why you should no be wonder... careful in the subway, right? And the Democrats. Yeah, and that, and that, well, you find, yeah, yeah, like, but 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 it's the Republicans we try and rely on for a little bit more sanity than the Dem left. But um, yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Gates because a lot of people are going to try and get rid of him. Well, Even, he would have um, done but... something twenty years ago that's some reprehensible thing. Well, they had a go at him. A, <laughs> yeah, a they'll year pull or two it out, ago. won't they? They had to well, go at him a year ago. And, and yeah, no, they, they've like been investigating him for tra- trafficking. Tra- they're trying to pin That's that it. on him, but yeah. I don't believe it. Every American breaks something like seven federal laws a day, uh, I seem to remember okay. reading. There's, that well, just means there's too many laws, right? Yeah, yeah, but... Unless you're Joe Biden and the Biden yeah. crime family. Yeah, yeah. Break as many <laughs> as you want. More than that. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how long Victor Hanson Davis thinks that uh, Joe will, Uncle Joe will stay stay there. I, I didn't well, hear well another really interesting yeah. interview was Trevor Loudon on on counterculture this week, talking about you know again the extent to which um, New Zealand politicians have their the Maoists, and, yeah, Maoists, but also around. Uh, he, he was talking about how we we sort of think, well, we don't want to invade anyone. No one wants to invade us. China's our friend. We sort of still got this idea that. We're living in a benign environment, and um, who was the New Zealander who yeah, lived in China not... all that time? Really, uh, really. Oh yeah. Well, we've, you know that must mean something. Sure, he still does it. Well, I mean, you know, the quickest way to end a war is to lose it, and I think that's the strategy that our leaders have played on our behalf. We don't have you any. You remember that old film, The Mouse That Roared? 
there was a, exactly about that. It was a small little country that declared war on the United States and then promptly surrendered. And can you please come and take us over and yeah. um, we'll have a US right. dollar. And <laughs> but but the Marshall and, Plan applied. Yeah. Yeah, but but the um, but the United States actually surrendered <laughs> in the movie. Okay. You've talked about that before, Cam. Is it a good watch? Uh, I wouldn't think so. It was made in the fifties. What well, was the movie with Tim Allen and they they someone had you know intercepted some alien no, civilization and that was a that's kind of like that. But uh, I forget about that now. All right, have we um have we gone through everything? It is probably anything- is a good movie, Olivia. It's got Peter Sellers in it. Oh, oh, I think of Peter Sellers. Is- 1950, 1959, a British satirical comedy film. Oh, check it out. I love yeah. Peter Sellers. The Mouse That Roared. Yeah. He's so funny. Mm. Or was. Very funny, man. Okay. Um, ha- have we missed anything? Is there anything, any final comments? Oh, probably. Any- probably any- probably missed Vote early, vote often. Oh, oh, well, yes, no, I've missed one thing. The most beautiful thing about what Matt, Matt Gates did was that the first thing that the new interim acting speaker, McHenry, did was evict Nancy Pelosi oh, yes, while she right, was yeah. away at Diane Feinstein's funeral. <laughs> she, she got a bit <laughs> Evicted about her that. out of the Capitol. Can you believe she still had her plush offices in there? Well, oh, she's, right. I, I read a few comments of hers and she said that was sort of a tradition. And um and yeah, that's that, how she tried to spin it because that, she was that, lenient. That they should concentrate on the important issues rather than these minor issues of evicting I, me. So. Yeah, Apparently they didn't drag that hag out of the building. Yeah, I mean, what's she doing there? <laughs> she's no longer employed there, and she's got one of the nicest suites of offices in the whole building. Um, so anyway, she's gone, and I think that was long overdue. And uh, you know, who knew she was actually still there? That shows you how tolerant. Well, that's too the tolerant swamp. to Dems, McCarthy. Yeah, swamp McCarthy. creature. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, she just needs another booster. <laughs> All right, I think uh, that's about it for this Friday morning for our political panel. Uh, thanks again to Olivia Pearson. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Marty Gibson, and thank you, Cam Slater. And uh, I think we're going to do a few uh, pop-up political discussions before. Um, the weekend, next weekend, not this, but next. And I think we've got uh, Cam, Olivia and Marty, a few things lined up for the night. Um, A few of us are going to be scattered around the place with plenty of incoming people and there'll be more details about how we're going to do that. I I guess we could call it some sort of election night party or get together at least. That was a good one uh, last week with uh, Muriel Newman and Morris Williams. uh, Williams Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, well, that's cool. Um, yeah, I thought it was a good mix. Uh, Morris, Morris, um, a lot going on there, right? You know, mathematician and he's a physicist, you know? Who yeah, knew? really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, he he running um, algorithms on vote. He's got and... multiple science degrees and computer science, and he's a statistician. He's running his own little, um, uh, you know, polling predictor spreadsheet. He's a ninja on spreadsheets. That's why I had him on the show last night. Uh, to talk about what yeah. he thinks is where it's heading, you know. So it's, it was interesting. It was you know, a little bit different. Uh, he certainly gave uh, his view on the two million votes that are going to go somewhere. Have we oh, had any good. feedback? Well, he's always an interesting mm-hmm. guest. Have we had yeah, any think- feedback about our big uh, billboards? And I saw a picture of you, Cam, um, I think up on the NZME building there, just over from the Empire. No, it was, uh, it was across the road from TVNZ. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> there's some real puckishness going on with some of that. Uh, In your face, baby. I love it. Our overladies are a bit mischievous sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but plenty of people will be seeing those. Plenty of people will be seeing those. That's right. And exactly. um, I saw you on the on the Herald side, so that must have hurt, but hurt a few um, on the inside of that. Yeah, or... just just I feel sorry for you know Shane Curry and. Simon Wilson here walking out the door while my face is planted all over their them. website. No, it can't be easy for them. Let's have a heart, have a bit of a care for them. <laughs> all, all right. So, oh, uh, I'll just dry my eyes a bit. Yeah. <laughs> so have a great weekend, guys, and uh, okay. we'll talk again next week, all right? Thanks very much, Paul. Thanks. Have a great week. Thank See you. Later. See you. RCR with Paul Brennan. Reality Check Radio.